What's up, sports fans? Welcome to Sports Chat with J&J. &J. I'm Jama, and I would just like to add, I walked a whole two blocks to find the ice cream truck. I found it. It drove right past me. It did this. And I was doing this waving my money. It drove right past me. I saw it turn the corner to go down Job Corps, and then my dreams were crushed. I was looking forward to a Starburst Swirled Bomb Pop. Welcome to Sports Chat with J&J. &J. I'm Jonna. I'm Jonathan. <laughs> well, after that tangent, <laughs> what we have in the game plan for you today, not that, but we're going to talk about the Warriors and Game 7 and how that series is all panning out, which is completely opposite what we thought was going to happen. But we'll discuss that in a second. First, we will talk about the next division in the NFL as we read each one leading up to the start of the regular season. Last week, NFC East. This week, AFC East. Go. What are your thoughts? So I'm going to pick the Patriots in that division. Uh, I think even though Tom Brady's out for games, possibly, I think... Uh I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be more than enough. If they can just break even while Brady's out, he'll do the rest. And plus, you know, you got the Jets. They don't have a quarterback yet. We don't know if the bearded wonder Fitzpatrick is going to even play for him. Also, all those Dolphin fans out there, shout out to Jamie Magnuson. This is for you. Ryan Tanner is going to be another bust. So uh, don't get your hopes up. They're going to be swimming with Flipper at Home Depot. In the outdoor lawn section aisle. That's aisle 320. What? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah. All right. Well, after that, you know, amazing in-depth explanation of why the Dolphins are going to be swinging Home Depot. <coughs> I agree with you, surprisingly, that the Patriots will win the division. Just, they did way too much in the offseason to help them out. Even with Brady being gone four games, they'll be fine. The system there works for any quarterback that really comes in. They'll either come away from that four games, either with a 2-2 two two or 3-1 and one record, and no one else in that division is going to contest them. You have the New York Jets. Oh, yeah, with the, Bills. with the you know uncertainty at quarterback, it, are they going to be able to re-sign Fitzpatrick, or are they going to go with Geno Smith or Christian Hackenberg? Yikes. You know? Yikes. Apparently Fitzpatrick wants a lot of money, which they're not willing to give, which I get. You know, he hasn't he's, done anything to this No, he hasn't. Has he done? Yeah, he hasn't earned the right to be paid like a Super Bowl winning quarterback when you never reach the Super Bowl. So I get that. You know, but so you have either Christian Hack Hackenberg, Geno Smith. Geno Smith already proved that he can't handle the NFL. He's hasn't done it. Hackenberg, unless he comes in and surprises a bunch of people, you know, plays really well, I don't see how the Jets are going to be able to win that division or even make it to the wild card. And they did do have, you know, a nice addition with Matt Forte. Do go along with, you know, Brandon Marshall, Eric Decker on the offense, but it's not going to be enough to do anything. Um, Buffalo Bills, yeah, you have LaShawn McCoy. Tyrod Taylor should be new in his second full season as a starter. You know, Sammy Watkins going to stay healthy the entire year. Even so... You know, I don't see them being able to make a run at the Patriots and the Dolphins. Tannehill, potential, 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 has never lived up to it. You know, at some point you guys have to cut the ties with him because he's clearly not what you guys with you know thought he was going to be. So I'm going to have the Patriots come out of that division. It's just too good. The system works too well there. They had a lot of additions this year to improve their defense, which they needed to do. I'm going to go with the Bills finishing second and the Jets third. That is depending on the quarterback situation for the Jets. If Fitzpatrick comes back and they sign him, I think they will finish number two and the Bills finish third. But regardless, the Dolphins are going to finish in last place. They have a lot of money spent you know, on, on that team, but not very good results on that. You know, Tann Tannehill is passive. He's not the answer in the defense. Is, you, know, you have all that money tied up in the defensive line, and it's you know, nothing special. Jets have too many weapons, even with Brady out. Yeah. Monk, Julian Edelman, yeah, Deion Lewis is coming back from a knee injury, probably going to be healthy. 
Yeah. So, and their defense is all revamped. Yeah, much improved defense. So, yeah, the Patriots, I think, run away with that division pretty easily. They'll probably, you know, be able to rest people like week 13 or 14. They'll probably already have it, you know, lined up. Now, whether you know, they have home field advantage throughout the playoffs, who knows. But division, they'll be wrapped up by week 13 or 14. I wouldn't be too surprised by that. Easily. Yeah. Easy. So, yeah, that division, pretty, pretty cut and dry there. Something that's not cut and dry is Cavs, Warriors. Last week, when we did our episode, Warriors were up 3-1. Looked like they were going to wrap this series up. No problem whatsoever. There's a problem. Warriors, what happened? Look at it. I was just saying it. I was just giving, You're not the, saying I was anything. Just giving You're the look it. saying. Yeah, uh-huh. Told you. So I think this is we're gonna take a look at this and this is to me what happened, okay? You have the emergence of the real LeBron James. Yes, which we talked about last you know episode, how he disappeared not playing like he's supposed Maybe to. Maybe he watched our episode somehow and you know it kind of channeled his inner chi in Tichai. Also, Kyrie Irving is playing it out of his mind these past two games. Which we also talked about the last episode, how he is playing like LeBron was supposed to have played. Also, I think I really think the Cavs' defense is... Their defense has stepped up. You know, they play. We talked about it earlier in the week. They're, the way they're playing Steph Curry is way different off the ball. They're playing him a lot more physical. And I think with Andrew Bogut being out, the issue with that is going to be, you know, that makes... Bogut was a rim protector. Bogut out, yes, they have Draymond Green back, but Bogut was a big space eater, you know. He clogged up the lane. Bogut's not there. LeBron just pretty much has the free gates open just to drive the lane and do whatever, you know. I mean... <clears throat> yeah, the thing that stands out with me with the Warriors is... Steph Curry has been absent. I mean, he does not look like the Steph Curry that played all throughout the regular season. He is missing a ton of shots. Even in the Thunder series, he wasn't the best. Yeah, and he has not looked that well. And then going to Game 6, fouling out with like four or five minutes left in the game, and then throwing a fit, you know, through his mouthpiece and hit one of the you know Cavs fans in the face, gets a technical on top of getting his sixth foul already and gets ejected. Then after that, things just started unraveling for the Warriors. I mean, it just all spiraled downhill after that. I mean, it just kind of turned ugly with Steve, you know, Steve Kerr in the face of the refs and all yeah. that. And it just got really bad for them. But if you look at, you know, the past two games, I mean, Steph Curry, games five, 25 points, game six, 30. And that's... With missing a lot of shots. Yeah, you had to in put there. up a lot of shots for that third. Yeah. Now, Clay Thompson, game five, That's 37 solid. points, game six, 28. He actually has looked good. I mean, he, most of the shots he puts up falls. It's just a matter of him, you know, getting the shots. Now, one thing that kind of, especially in game six that I saw really bugged me about Clay Thompson is that he, like, looks for those fouls. He'll just randomly throw up a shot for three point bump himself into the defender and hope that the refs call a foul on the defender's biggest three free throws. And that happened a couple of times in Game 6, and that just, that just bugged me. Yeah, he's I, not going to get those that. calls in Game 7, I can guarantee you that. Yeah, that that annoys me when a player tries to do that. It's like, do you not trust yourself enough? I mean, you are one of the best shooters ever. Do you have to throw yourself into a defender to try to get a foul called? and just throw up this stupid-looking three-point shot that has no chance of falling, you look like an idiot. Just play your game. You can make that three-point shot if you try. Don't try to just throw yourself in the fender and hope to get a foul call. That just it just seems idiotic to me. Why why do that? Especially when they didn't get called. I mean, what, you know, at least the one time, it actually, you know, they waved it off and said, no, you ran. And then they got mad, him. too, because they didn't call it. Yeah, it's like, no, there's a reason why they didn't call it. You were the one initiating contact. It's not the defender's fault. But, yeah, with Game 5-6, LeBron James finally, finally played like the best player in the world. He, like, he is supposed to play 41 points in Game 5, 41 points in Game 6. Where has this LeBron James been in the first four games? 
you know, game three did pretty well, but where was he in game one, two, and four? It's because he didn't watch Sports Jabber. Apparently. Yeah, and Kyrie Irving, game five, 41 points to go along with LeBron's 41 points. Last game, 23. So he really was able to get... He had been playing aggressive the entire series, but these past games he was able to get shots to fall. He's finding his groove. Yeah, so, I mean, we have... James Irving both scoring 41 points. That's going to be hard to beat, That's you know, tough. game five. But, yeah, game six, Irving came back down to earth only getting 23 points. But, you know, he still made a, you know, you know concerted effort, you know, to throw up shots. Um, but the, you know, Cavs, their bench, you know, it's, you know, pretty, pretty decent. You know, J.R. Smith in game five scoring 11. Then in game six, Tom scoring 15, Smith 14. Love didn't get a whole lot of points in Game Six, no, mainly because trouble. yeah he got foul trouble early and had to sit out a lot of time. But with the Warriors, one that surprised me is Barnes, five points in Game Five. He's been struggling the whole postseason, nothing, really. Yeah, nothing in Game Six. He's a potential free agent. He's not making himself look good. You know when it comes to going on the free agent markets, you know he goes on the market like, hey, guess what I did in the playoffs? Not nothing. Much. You know, you want to sign me to lead your team when I'm going to come up small on the biggest stage? Five points. Game five, zero. Game six. You know, you had been you been talking him up. You know, over you know on the you know last episode, you know Harrison Barnes like is he you know going to come back to the Warriors? Or is he going to sign a big you know free agent deal? If he's not a good one if he plays like this. If he comes up small in game seven, what does he have to throw in his resume? Nothing. Like, yeah, I can play decent in the regular season. Well, like on the postseason, I'm going to disappear. Even at even at home in Oakland, he's had games where he hasn't played well. That's his home crowd. Oh, yeah, game five, five points, and that was in Oakland. Yeah, that was at home. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, like you said, you know, he, he might want the big contract, but like you're saying, there's not going to be a lot of teams that are going to willing to take a chance on someone that isn't showing up in the finals. Mm -hmm. Hasn't shown up in the whole playoffs, oh, really. Yeah. Especially if he's going to look for that, you know, max that big deal. deal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no one's going to sign him as, like, to be their lead guy when he comes up like this in the postseason. So, I mean, he's come small. Obviously, you had German Green out game five. He came back game six. Eh, he did okay. Nothing spectacular. I thought they did a great job on Draymond Green on the boards in but game six. What's going to hurt the Warriors, though, is you had mentioned the loss of Bogut. Iguodala has a bad back. You could see him in game six. He looked terrible. He was walking around like he was an 80-year-old man. He looked there. like he lifted too many woods at Home Depot in the millwork section. And too many Krispy Kremes off of the conveyor belt. Back to you, John. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, he looked bad. <laughs> I don't even know where to go <laughs> after that. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. Heard back, who knows how well he's going to be able to play in Game 7. If he... Supposedly the reports say he's going to play with his back and he's going to oh, play well. It's, well. It's, I don't know if he's going to play well, though. I mean, I understand him playing Game 7. You're going to go all out for Game 7 a chance to win the title. I mean, I get that. But, yeah, how well is he going to play? Is he going to look like the same person where he's running kind of hunched over like this, you know, in pain? Or is he going to look decent? I mean, if he's hunched like, you know, running down, you know, like he was in Game 6 in pain... Cavs don't have to really worry about him that much because he's not going to do a whole lot. Just constant the other side of the That's what I'm saying. That's one yeah. best player. You know, our injury is going to come to bite Golden State. Yeah, now in this pivotal game. And then are the Warriors going to rebound from a game six where things dismantled for them? It just kind of came crashing out. Steph Curry gets fouled out. Clay Thompson just looks so upset with everything. He is playing well, but the rest of the team around him is not. Even his other big player, Steph Curry, has not looked good at all, really, this entire postseason. No. So he looks frustrated. Draymond Green, he looked okay last, you know, in game six. The bench, though, came up small for the Warriors. Didn't really, actually, not much of anything. Clay Thompson, if the Warriors somehow, you know, if they win, he needs to be the finals MVP. He's the only one that's oh, showing up for every yeah. game. I agree. <laughs> so, but then after the after the game, Steve Kerr he makes a you know 
complains about the officiating, saying the refs aren't calling fouls on when their team comes off pick and roll, the Cavs are holding, you know, holding players that like refs aren't calling it. He gets fined for that, kind of does a Phil Jackson type of move where Phil Jackson would say something like that, like, oh, the refs aren't calling this. So the next thing, that's what the refs are looking at. They're looking for that. So are the refs going to look for, you know, when the Warriors come off pick and roll, are the Cavs holding them? If they are, are they going to call it now? It's a game seven. I hope that the refs let the players play. I don't want the game to be officiated too tight. I don't want game seven to come down to officiating. I want it to come down to the players. I'm kind of surprised by that comment with Steve Kerr because he played during the era where they had physical play in games. Well, like I said, he's just kind of playing one of Phil Jackson's, yeah. you know, Phil Jackson's mind games. Like, I'm going to mention this. That way the refs have to think about it. And the refs are going to hopefully call it. Because if Phil Jackson was great at, he would you know make these comments. It's like, oh, refs, you know, next game, oh, we better look for that. And that's what they focus on. So that's what he wants the refs to focus on. Which, you know, is a smart move if, you know, the refs do that. But yeah, I yes, don't see it yes. in the game seven. No, I, like I said, I hope the, you know, the refs just let the teams play. I don't, want, I don't want it to come down to officiating. I want the best team to win. And I want it to be a very, I, I don't mind if it's a physical game. By all means, do that. It would be fantastic. But then, you know, along with Steve Kerr, then he has Steph Curry's wife tweeting. Blowing and, up the Twitter world. Yeah, saying the game, you know, it was This rigged. game was rigged. This game was rigged. I watched it live. My husband got thrown out. Like, is the game rigged when your husband can't make a shot? When he's throwing up these threes that are, you know, bouncing off. He the shot rim? air balls. Stephen Curry shot air yeah, balls last he game. He looked bad. Is, is, are they somehow getting somehow rigging your, you know, husband from not being able to make these shots and taking these kind of stupid shots normally he's able to make, but lately he can't make any of that. Are they rigging that? Grant, now the first three fouls on Steph Curry, I get. Those are clear-cut fouls. Last three, you know, they were kind of, you know... Kind of tossy, kind of 50-50. Yeah, but I mean... You can't say, oh, that's rigged because, you know, this. No, it's rigged because your husband can't make a shot. You know, your Warriors aren't going to win if Steph Curry is not playing like he had played all regular season. That to be able to just, you know, knock down basically every three, every three he wanted to make. It's not going to happen. And then to give the Cavs credit, they have played great games. Game six was never really in that much question. No, there was never a time where the Cavs were... I mean, Golden State made their late push where they cut it to, like, nine. There was the never Cavs a time were, where the Cavs did not lead in exactly. the game. Yeah, they led the whole entire yeah. game, start to finish. Exactly. I mean, first quarter, the Cavs dominated. Second quarter, the you know, Warriors kind of came on a little bit, was able to get the, you know, less in the gap. Third quarter, started out strong for the Cavs. They widened their lead up to as much as I think it was 24. Cap, you know, Warriors were able to, you know, Bump into that, and then fourth quarter, first half, he was somewhat close, then just all ra- unraveled for the Warriors with Steph Curry fouling out, and then oh, it geez. just, yeah, everything just went downhill for them from there, and the Cavs were able to finish it off. So, I mean, it's, you know, the Warriors, they have to be able to bounce back from that, because they did not, they have not looked good really the past two games, but now can the Cavs keep this up? Can they continue with this, you know, great defense they've been playing? Because there's other games that they started out great defense. But then they let down in the second half. Yeah. And, they, you know, even game six, they, there was times where they were kind of, you know, slacking kind of off back. there. And, you know, the Warriors were able to, you know, cut the lead down to 8-7 or I think at 1.6. Which, I mean, still wasn't, you know, incredibly close. But the Cavs is going to back off something. You can't back off on this Warriors team. No, you got to keep your foot on their throat. Yeah, I mean, they can easily go on a 12 nothing run in no time. So, I mean, they have to do that. So now in the upcoming Game 7, which is Sunday, can the Cavs, can LeBron James continue to just put the team on his back like he has the past two games and play like the player he's supposed to, which is the best player in the world? If he scores another 41 points... So they have a tough. very good chance of winning. But then again, what can he get from Kyrie Irving? Is it going to be the Kyrie Irving from the first two games, or these past two games, or the first two games where he made a lot of shots, wasn't making a whole lot of shots? Can Will Kevin Love do anything? If So okay. I, I think the game seven is going to come down to two things for the Cavs. Well, actually three things. 
LeBron can stay in attack when like he's been playing. If he does, it's he has it's, to do that. He can come out in attack mode. It's like a cancer. Kyrie starts to play aggressive. The other players start to play aggressive. And also, the third one I have is, can Kevin Love finally get in groove going? Yeah. Aside from LeBron, we know what LeBron's going to bring. He's probably going to bring another well, LeBron like Well, do eight. we know what LeBron's going to Because game five and six, he played great. The first four games... We talked about, no, not so much. Is he going to play like he had in five or six? Or is he going to play like he did games one through four, where he, you know, is so passive and tentative when he's, you know... Oh, it's game seven. It's game seven. you you got to believe the superstars from both teams are going to lay it all on the line. You would hope so. You would hope that's the case. But yeah, can you know what can they get out of Kevin Love? Can he do finally do something in this playoffs? Because he's been pretty absent. Can they get him involved? Can he start making some shots? Can he get some points on the board? Can J.R. Smith, you know, get you? You don't need much from him. Just well, you just something. need maybe a two big threes or something like that. You know what? Uh, you know what you're getting out of Tristan Thompson. You're probably gonna get a double double again, like sixteen boards or something, like he's been doing. Yeah, he's been he's been stepping up. Jefferson, you know, he, when Jefferson he gets in there, he plays some, some big pretty, shots, good minutes. Yeah. So really, you know, can you know, as long as you get LeBron from Game Five and Six, you're you're in and, a good shape. Yeah, and Kyrie Irving can get shots to fall because he's making he's taking a lot of shots. He's driving you know a lot, but can he get the shots to fall? That's the thing. And then yeah, Tristan Thompson, you know, just kind of maintain what he has been doing. Yep. J.R. Smith, he hit those few threes every now and then, and then just get something out of Kevin Love. Then going to the Warriors side. Clay Thompson just play like he has been playing. He's been really their only consistent guy throughout this, you know, NBA Finals. You know, when he has the ball, and he shoots a three. It's basically going in the way he's been playing. But Steph Curry, which Steph Curry you're gonna get? As he has not played well this entire, you know, entire series. He, like I said, he had 30 points last, you know, Game Six. But there's a lot of shots he missed. He didn't have a good percentage. Barnes, will he score anything? You know, Iguodala, how much is his back going to hurt him? Yeah, Green, they, you know, can they get anything out of Draymond Green? So, I mean, the Warriors have a lot of question marks going into this Game 7. But now, one thing they have going for them is it's in Oakland. So, they have the home court advantage, at least. You know, so they'll be playing, you know, they'll have the, you know, the you know the energy of the they'll crowd. Have, they will have them. the crowd, but, I mean, it's, it's something people to think about the... When they were down three to one, one of the games the Cavs had to win to put it three two was in Oakland. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, if you if you told me I had to bet, you know, like you know, a good chunk of my own money on this game, who were you gonna put it on? I'd have to go with the Warriors just because just because of the home team. They're at home, so I guess that's where I'd go with who I pick for Game Seven. It's the Warriors. Granted, I also picked them to win this. You know, way before the finals even started. But, you know, they are at home. You know, like I said, I would love, would love for the Cavs to win just because I would love to see Cleveland finally get a championship in that city. Cleveland would get a lot of time from us the next episode. Yes, and then, but, you know, but if I had, like I said, if I had to put, you know, a picture of my own money on this game, I'd put it on the Warriors just because, yeah, they have the home court advantage. You know, I guess that's where I would go with it. I'm actually uh, not making a pick in this one because uh, it's it's too tight for me. Um, I will go on. I will go out saying this though. I feel like whichever teams, whichever team can get their main players, if they can get off to the right groove, like if LeBron can play like the regular LeBron and Kyrie can keep playing at his level, they're gonna be at a pretty good chance. And of course, the Warriors. It's gonna come down to. The Cavs defensively, can they keep playing this defensive intensity that they've been playing with Golden State these next these last two games? And the uh, Warriors' chemistry is going to be, what are they going to get from Curry? Is Curry going to, you know, still be nullified by the Cavs' defense? Because, like, Clay Thompson's been showing up. I mean, he's had 41 points in a few games and 37, and they've still lost. So, I mean... It's so, Game 7. I mean, 
I'm not. I can't make a pick. It's it's too tough for me. I mean, I just so you're copping out. I mean, I'm not copping out. I mean, you're copping out. I don't want to make a pick. I don't know what you're. Why don't you stick with what you what you said a few episodes ago? You said Cavs were gonna win in seven. You're not gonna stick with that. You're not gonna be like, no, I call this. I am sticking with it. No. I will say this. America, not gonna stick with your convictions. If LeBron James shows up like LeBron James, the Cavs will hoist the trophy. Now, if you excuse me. So, are you saying the Cavs are going to win? I'm saying if LeBron James shows up, the Cavs will hoist the trophy. So, now if you, out. if you will excuse me, Home Depot closes at about 10 o'clock, and it's, uh, let's see here. It's cop-out time. That's what it is. Oh, oh it's 10.26. I'm going to miss the sale on the yard. I don't want to make a pick. I don't want to be wrong. You're copping out. out. You don't believe in jinxing. Well, then pick the Warriors. You don't believe in jinxing? Pick no, the Warriors. Not, no. no. Okay, if you're not going to pick the Warriors, then you're picking the Cavs. I pick Yoshi. You're picking the Cavs. He is picking the Cavs. Remember, he said the Cavs were going to win. If LeBron James can show up and play, the Cavs will win. You. Picked the Cavs in seven a few episodes ago. I just, that I just made my pick. pick. No, I you just didn't. Made my pick. No. Blind. This you is said ambush if, journalism you again. Said if, this if, is the if last LeBron, episode of Sports Jabber with Jay and Jay. It's if just going to be Jay. Actually, please, like you're supposed to, they're going to win. No, you make a pick. You picked the Cavs in seven a few episodes ago. You stick with it. I am stick with my Warriors picking. I don't feel that. Awesome about it. Stick with your pick. Cavs will win. There you go. Got the Cavs. Finally. I think LeBron James right now. <sighs> LeBron James said in this last interview, I, I know the history is, is on, the, on our side. You know, teams that were down 3-1 to one in the finals are haven't won. But I'm going to play to the best of my abilities and see what happens. That's what he said. I would hope he played to the best of your abilities as Game 7 in the Finals. But that's what he was saying. He knows that it's not on their side history, but he's going to play the best of his abilities and see what happens. You know, Meaning, if he plays good, he's going to let the chips fall where they may if they win or lose. Meaning, blah, 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 generic sports talk. I'm not going to say anything specific. So. I'm getting a migraine just sitting next to this. Warriors. Guy. Took a while to get out of him. But Cavs, even though he picked it a few episodes ago, I didn't want to really stick with it. Because I don't know why. Because he's like, so them. Tight. It's such a tight game. Everything's tight in this game. Stick with your conviction. So LeBron James plays well. Comes out like the LeBron James we know he can. They will hoist that little trophy. Now, if you excuse me, Cavs. I have to go to Tim Hortons now. Because I missed Home Depot because they're closed. Hortons is closed, too. Oh, don't have a Krispy Kreme. I just want an ice cream truck, guys. If you know someone that owns an ice cream truck, tell them to drive it to my house. Facebook me. Sports Jabber Facebook page. Follow us on Facebook. Granted, none of that conversation is going to be ever on Facebook ever again. But also, like and subscribe us on YouTube. Leave comments below. We'd love to answer questions. Once again, I'm Jonathan. He doesn't know his name, but it's Jama. Have a good night. And I'm Jama.